Today we are going to learn nine new features in Microsoft Loop. Let's start out. And the release that we've all been waiting for is that Loop is now available in OneNote. At Amy's Animal Shop, we've had a busy year and we are planning a work retreat to reward our staff. So we are going to create this voting table to decide where we should go for our retreat. Just going to quickly delete these two columns here. Now let's copy this loop component. Let's paste this voting table into an email so that we can see it side by side and update in real time. Look at that, that vote is for Portugal. Okay, so we are now starting to plan our work retreat to Portugal. And let's organize this document by selecting our headers, heading on up to this ellipsis here, and then going to headings and lists. And a new feature is the collapsible headings as well as the shortcut keys. Let's select heading one, and then we can head on down here and go control alt four, control alt five, and then control alt six. So we can see how this has helped us organize our document a little bit nicer, and we can collapse these individually, or you can right click in a header and we can collapse all of them, for example. And a little bonus tip is now that we have those headers in there, we can easily add a table of contents for further ease of navigation. Moving along to a new integration with Power Automate is the ability to apply rules to tables. Now this doesn't just apply to annual table, it applies to every type of table. There's a lot of them within Microsoft Loop. Taking a look at this product launch task list here, let's select the ellipsis and select rules. We want this rule to trigger when a bucket is changed to or equals event. Now the options here are send an email or there's a couple of different options for teams. We have an event channel within a team. We wanna notify them when a new task has been assigned to them. Let's select continue, click through the prompts and here we'll just define our team. So we're going to select operations and then the channel is going to be event planning. So let's create that flow. And just a little highlight here is once you've created your rules and you can manage your rules down here. So if you wanted to pause it, you could switch off your rule for now, delete it or even edit it further. I prefer the board view here, so let's just change that over. And then now let's drag and drop the send invitations for the event over to the event bucket. And there we go, that Power Automate trigger has now posted a message in that channel. And All right, so we saw that board view within this task list. And now this is also available in a standard table. If we head on over to this grid icon, then we're going to see here that the board is grayed out, but we can select anywhere in this table and add a column. And we're just going to change this column type. We're going to change column type to a label. There are some predefined options here, such as progress or priority, but I've also created a custom label group called departments. So now we can just assign our departments and you can see that I've even added some nice little cute emojis as well as color coded them appropriately for a visual effect. Great. And now I feel that this table is getting a little crowded. So let's just expand that table for a better view. And if we head on over to that grid icon, then we can now select the board view. Now I really like the board view because it does create that visual effect. But sometimes I find that these list items here or these info cards are a bit limiting. So if you want to expand it out, then you can add a field here, which is going to create another field in your table, or you can even tag people within your organization and add additional comments or direct them to certain items such as documentations. And a final little tidbit before we head on over to my favorite feature is the ability to sort and filter. So let's just say that we want to filter for just the marketing department. We'll say department is marketing. So this is going to narrow down the view for the marketing department as well as the ability to sort. So I've only got a couple of items here, so there's not much to sort, but if you did have a lot, then you can see how this would really help you focus on important items that you're specifically searching for. One of my favorite new features in Loop is the ability to take a plan from Planner and bring it into Loop. We could simply copy this URL for this web page here and paste it into Loop. Alternatively, you can just go forward slash and search Planner. And then here you're going to see all of your recent plans brought up. So now we can just click insert. And with this amazing integration, 
we can easily update our plan within planner or within loop and then we can see it update across the board just like that if you are interested in learning about the different ways that you can manage tasks within loop then i have included a video linked in the top right corner here now let's say that I wanted to duplicate this page so we can select the ellipses here and head on down to duplicate and oops, I've accidentally deleted it. Oh, look at that. Another new feature is the recycling bin on the bottom left. If you select the ellipses here, then you can easily restore deleted pages. Last but not least, if you are a Figma user, you can now embed their URLs into Microsoft Loop. Thank you for watching this video to the end, and I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. We will catch you on the next video.